can look out the window and say, hey guys. Or maybe he wants to go through drive through and pick up a burger. Whatever, whatever you want. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo, and, well, Happy New Year. Crazy year, and not just in the realm of toys, but that's all I talk about here. So, when it comes to that, there were some ups, there were some downs, but damn it, we tried to have fun, didn't we? Like I always say, that's the name of the game. If you ain't having fun with your hobby, then, oh, I don't know what to tell you. And from the looks of it, next year is going to be just more of the same, and I can't complain about that. So let's put 2021 behind us, look forward to 2022, because even though it's been a holiday week, toy companies can't help themselves. There's just stuff to talk about. Last week we talked about the Metacom, Mofex, Snyder Cut, Justice League, Superman, and I was lamenting about how it looked to reuse the sculpt of that first Batman v Superman Superman. There's no easy way to say that. Batman v Superman Superman. And how much I hated that figure and how it put me off Mafex and how I was hoping that they fixed the issues if that was the case. Well, that doesn't seem to be the case. Thanks to a few comments, I was reminded that there was actually a regular Justice League Superman in between Dawn of Justice Superman and this Superman. Maybe I had a trauma-induced amnesia or something because whew, that's how bad that first figure was. But I never got that Justice League Superman, so I was comparing promo images this week and I couldn't help thinking, well, this is the same sculpt too. They, they reused that first body again. Then I went and checked out D-Amazing's review of that Justice League Superman and he did a comparison to the Dawn of Justice Superman. And while the sculptural details are the same, <laughs> that's about the only thing it shares is the actual details. There's different proportions, and best of all, there's way less issues. You can check that out here, and that kind of takes away the worry when it comes to the Snyder Cut Superman, because if anything, and I don't see why they wouldn't, if it is reuse, they would go back to that Justice League Superman, right? Not the B versus S Superman. That still doesn't sound right. Randy over at NECA spent his Christmas Eve on Twitter giving us little sneak peeks, little teases of upcoming product, and ooh, there's some goodies on the horizon. Looks like we're getting a movie Krampus figure, and I have to say, after years and years and years of being very lean when it comes to super articulated holiday themed action figures, the, the floodgates have kind of opened recently. This is the third Krampus figure I've talked about in the past month, I think. Yeah, three. Ain't nothing wrong with that, though. But there will be a wait. The bottom does say holiday season 2022. He also showed off a couple of Universal Monsters Mummy accessory set pieces. I think these were included in the original solicitation pictures for the mummy itself. And first reaction was, hey, are we getting those with the figure? So this may be a reaction to that, or maybe it was always in the plans. Either way, we're getting some kick-ass Dio filler. It also looks like we're gonna get an accessory set for the Back to the Future line, and they only showed Einstein, but does it need any more than that? That builds excitement on its own. Even if you're not into Back to the Future, here's a nice dog sculpt to put anywhere. But I think the sneaky peeky that made everybody pull their phones closer to their face is the package reveal for the Gargoyles Bronx. Not so much for Bronx himself, even though package shots means one step closer to grubby mitts. It was the little pictures on the back of the package that brought on all the excitement. Just little teases for Lexington, Brooklyn, and Broadway. Characters we knew were coming, but it's awesome to see them in plastic form. Or, well, prototype form, and even then it's just headshots. The excitement is still there. The main cast is coming together and Randy's teasing even more for Toy Fair. So <laughs> there's more to come. McFarlane also continues his DC Multiverse reveals this week, but moves kind of into the Build-A-Figure and Mega-Fig realm. Well, okay, with Endless Winter Frost King, it does show the figures that the pieces come with. It looks like a re-release of Green Lantern, another Wonder Woman variant, Black Adam, and Snow Gear Batman. Then there's the Mega-Fig Arkham Asylum Titan Joker, and he's big, he's ugly, but he's supposed to be. My big thing is look at this picture and how the colors just pop. I like the larger figures because even if you're not into the one tenth scale or seven inch or whatever they do here, you can take the bigger figures and fudge them into your other DC lines that may not be in this scale, which also applies to Rebirth Clayface. Oh, I didn't build the Mattel Collect and Connect Clayface, so this will do nicely. And 
actually it's way cheaper than buying a whole wave of Mattel figures even back at the first of 2018. <laughs> Think about that. That's how long ago that was. Clayface is goopy. He's poopy. He'll be intimidating as all hell on your shelf. And I think someone on the forums earlier called him Old Mudbutt, and I can't get that out of my head. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised if Mudbutt isn't a comic character in some universe somewhere. Speaking of DC, a magazine scan for the Kyoto Amazing Yamaguchi Superman popped up right as I was finishing the weekly last week. And I thought, I'm just going to wait for the pretty promotional pictures. And... Th they followed soon after. Well, I say pretty depending on your stance when it comes to Revel Tech joints. Sometimes it looks good, like when there's costume elements to hide the gappiness of this style of articulation, but when it comes to skin tight gear, they can be a little bit too in your face for some people. Even that can be hidden with creative posing and camera angles, but it's still a journey to get there. It's a steep curve. Is it worth a crazy stance if you have to spend 30 minutes? pushing joints back in, or sliding this here, or turning this, or, oh, the capes. And I say that as a person who enjoys this line, for the most part. There has been some figures that's, mm, For me, the capes are too much. Just segmented nightmares. And it also brings it in the comments of the very few people who feel like they're on uh, an enlightened plane because they tell you they enjoy this. Oh, you don't enjoy having nasty puzzles hanging off the back of your figures? <laughs> oh, wait. I'll swap mine out for a cloth cape, go back to my cave, play, have fun. <laughs> Saying all that, if you're into the series and you want a Superman to go along with your Batman, doesn't look like pre-orders have actually opened up yet, but that should be soon. You know, I didn't catch it with last week's Mezco 112th Collective Alien Concept Edition announcement, but with this week's Silent Hill 2 Red Pyramid thing, <laughs> one thought pops in my head. Mezco, don't give a f about your holidays. No, no, I'm kidding. It just struck me funny that they bookended Christmas with two horror top characters. And they did do the holiday Gomez, so easy. It's just a joke. With this, big surprise. I don't know much about Silent Hill 2. The most exposure I have to this look is cosplay at Comic-Cons. I couldn't have told you that there were two styles to the pyramid head. I like how they make swappable heads. And wait, head? Also, I've never heard it called red pyramid thing. It's always been pyramid head to me. Maybe it's a more relaxed term. It's less syllables to use at a show, you know? Hey, there's Pyramid Head. Hey, there's Red Pyramid thing from Silent Hill 2. Not knowing about it doesn't stop me from appreciating it, especially that, okay, the figure's cool and all that, but the great sword and spear, if I didn't know any better, I would have thought they went out into a backwoods field and found these kind of buried under a rock where it's, they've just been rusting and crusting up because that looks fantastic. The blood effects are fitting, and I was actually surprised when I clicked to the side and there was another accessory page with the creeper things, what are those called? The creeper bugs? And then a very unsettling mannequin. All for $100, which is not bad when it comes to a 112th collective offering. Eh? Soft Goods gets us over to the Damn Toys Death Gas Station. These were brought to my attention during Monday Foosh Live, and I'm intrigued for some reason. I had no clue there were other figures in this series, including Old Bone, King Pelvis, and Golden Dog, much less brand new pre-orders like the Freedom Brothers. These evoke visions of Ashley Wood and 3A, that same style and execution, but kind of leap even further into the wackiness. Well, okay, as I say that the 3A stuff was wacky. This kind of goes in a different direction. It's almost hometown? It's almost my speed. How about that? Anglin and Frank come with quite a few accessories, everything a pair needs to escape from prison and then, you know, camp out on the run. And I love that the figures aren't just deco swaps or, you know, different name tags, different paint. Anglin is actually taller than Frank, but also like World War Robot, the prices are a little bit up there. This set is $185. Then again, considering the prices on the previous figures that run about 110 to 130, Taking that into account, it's not bad for two of them. It should release quarter two of 2022. And if you're having any reservations about ordering because you haven't heard of damn toys, it's the same company that does the blank, sometimes translucent figures like Candyman and Freeze Man and the Crash Test Dummy. Those drop fairly regular. And I think Golden Dog and Old Bone is already in people's hands. 
So there is a track record here. I can't say the same about Toys Raider because I've never heard of this company. This week my good friend Dis Thunder sent me an Instagram post showing off the mm, live battlefield conqueror mechas and oh, <laughs> it's something new. It's something fresh for these eyeballs to look at that's, you know, ah! There are three mechas up for pre-order and in a situation like this, I would usually guess it's the same base body, just some changes made to certain parts. Head, shoulder pads, knees, deco, and that's, that's exactly what this is. It's still done fantastically and I, it makes each one feel unique, but uniform, you know? The bulky shoulders on Bloody Repression gives it a different feel than the Blue Stormtrooper, even though they share a similar color scheme with the blues and the silvers. Which is weird because I would have went with red for something called Bloody Repression, but they did add a little bit of red, and then the copper does a good job of differentiating too. Then Red Thread brings a ton of yellow to the group. <laughs> red Thread. But names don't matter when the figures look this good with the wear and the tear and the patinas and just the overall presence. Definitely futuristic, but also down and dirty. The weapon loadouts differentiate the personalities and duties even more, with Red Thread obviously being the sniper, there's a scope, there's a long gun, and it also points it out right in the picture. <laughs> so, I mean, there's no mistaking it. Bloody Repression is the heavy, and then Blue Stormtrooper is the ranger. $110 a piece or a three pack for $330, which makes you think, well, that's no deal. That's just each individual times three. But there are exclusive weapons to that three pack. And then this also is set to release in Q2 2022. Finally, let's talk about Spider-Man No Way Home because who isn't talking about Spider-Man No Way Home. And it's not even figure news. It's a limited time accessory added to a pre-existing pre-order, but it's a nice get. It's a nice add. We got the solicitations for the integrated and black and gold suits back in September before we had any context as to why these suits look the way they do. The twist integrated was $35, even though it came with some alternate hands and web effects. Flipside black and gold was the more realistic SHF $55 price point while still having extra hands, web effects, magic effects, and alternate unmasked Peter Parker head. The momentary confusion was that they showed an unmasked Peter Parker head with the integrated suit promotional pictures too, but made sure to say this head comes with the black and gold and it has an alternate red neck to go with the integrated suit. So you can use it in both places, but you have to buy both figures to get the whole deal. I guess that was just to sweeten the pot a bit but it may have not sweetened it enough. This week Bandai went back to that black and gold solicitation and added a first come first serve magic portal and stand for no extra cost, which is awesome, but it makes you think, did they not sell as many as they wanted to? Or, and to get into slight spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie, go ahead and skip ahead. There's the chapters right there. Maybe after seeing the movie, people canceled their pre-orders because they realized that the suit wasn't as prominent as we were led to believe. It was just that scene. And then whoosh, Bandai's all, whoa, 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 come back. And hey, hey, how about this too? And I know it's just a thin, clear piece of acrylic with the portal actually painted on there, but it's still free. And they do point out that you can shine a light behind it and it shines through and it looks like it's glowing and stuff. So if that's your thing, pre-orders in the description. And that's it for this week, I think. Diving into the damn toys and the toys raider, whatever it's called, th those lesser known toys, I was finding other things to talk about. And maybe we'll have to start doing a show of, hey, not Hasbro, not Mattel, not McFarlane, not these big companies. Maybe throw them into the Monday Foosh Live or something, which if I miss something this week, We'll talk about it there and the next weekly. If you're interested in seeing any of these pictures up close without me all, toys are fun. Ooh. I'll be posting all of that, plus links to pre-orders, more information on the Foosh front page Saturday at noon. It's a new year and I'm gonna start out kind of a, not a wish list, but just a wish. I'm, I'm gonna put this out into the universe. Last week we talked about McFarlane Toys raising the DC Direct, DC Collectibles, DC Essentials line from the grave. And it started a lot of conversations about another canceled DC Collectibles line, Icons. That also had a series or two near the end that were shown but never released. Just look at this Booster Gold and Beetle and Catwoman and Etrigan. And, and I'd forgotten there was another canceled series. Nightwing made it out, but Shazam looks cool and Sinestro looks awesome. 
and everyone needs a classic style dead shot. The thing is, Todd, and yes, I'm addressing you directly, Todd. The thing is, there's a big old six inch hole in the DC marketplace right now. Multiverse is fine and dandy, but some people haven't wanted to make the jump in scale. Plus, you usually play within the modern realm most of the time. Icons is perfect for the 112 crowd at this point. It had its problems at first, but they were doing a lot to rectify that. They were fixing a lot of things. Hell, I'll admit it, I didn't warm up to Icons until near the end. And <laughs> unfortunately, I was buying and then boom, gone. And I bought some ones I missed and I liked what I got. The problem was at the time we had Mattel's DC Universe Classics, which had been running for a while. So we had shelves and it looked like a who's who in plastic form. People weren't ready for another 112 scale line, especially one that skewed true 112. But I think the market is ready now. It's been some years, the palette is cleansed. People are hungry for some six inch DC. Here's the plan. Keep modern and self-contained costumes to multiverse. I almost want to say drop essentials because it's essentially eh, 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 competing with the multiverse line, but it could also be seen as a supplement. And then a lot of icons have classic and, well, <laughs> iconic looks. Mm -hmm. You know you want to Come on. Let me know if you guys feel the same or if you think I'm a crazy person. <laughs> Post that down there too. I'd, I'd like to, to know. If you enjoyed this weekly, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on foosh. Whoa, man, new year. It just, it just kind of flew by. But at the same time, 2020 feels like forever ago. So it was slow and it was fast at the same time. How does that work? Don't get old, kids. <laughs> Things start to blur and you start to forget just how long ago some things happened. But all we can do is enjoy it while we can. Let's <laughs> and have fun.